Hi, welcome to the C Sharp program tutorial. Um, today we're going to speak about polymorphism. Now, polymorphism is a big part of object oriented programming. Now, the last tutorial we looked at constructors. Now, constructors is a big part of polymorphism um, in C Sharp. And we looked at method overloading. And that's another big part. Um, but the main thing of polymorphism is inheritance, where the, you can reuse code, reusability. And so it means you write code once and you don't need to write it again. You can reuse it in different programs, different applications, etc. Um, and that would be a base class. It's also known as a super class, it's also known as a parent class. And what in C sharp is base. We're going to use the keyword base, so the best to stick to base. And the the one that inherit the class that inherits inherits uh, the the base class is called a D life class. No, it's also known as a child class and a subclass. And so what we're going to be using is like base and derived, just because it's C sharp. And so what it is, if we look at the dog class, all dogs are similar. They've all got certain things in common that, that make them a dog. Now, if a dog didn't do a certain thing, it wouldn't be a dog. It may be a cat, um, and someone's mistook it for a dog. So so you can you can pin a dog down to certain characteristics, a general thing. And you can turn around and say, well, that's a dog because it's got these, but we don't know what kind of dog. We don't know what kind of character the dog's got. We don't know the kind of job it does, if it does a job. And so that would be general. And so if you looked at a poodle, um, a poodle, someone would have a poodle because it's cute, because it's a fashion icon, um, because it's friendly, it's not aggressive. No, if someone had a, a pit bull, no, no, a pit bull would be an aggressive, dangerous dog, um, powerful, strong, all these sorts of things. Um, it may not even be dog friendly. Um, the poodle would be like uh, dog friendly, but kind of I don't know, stuck up, kind of like snobbish. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But, um, like a, a poodle wouldn't be took to the hairdressers to have a designer haircut. A poodle may maybe a poodle wouldn't be took to um, the hairdressers to have like a hair tie change its colour of hair. Um, a poodle, that, that can happen. And so a, a pit bull casts its hairs. So if you've got a cap, it could be covered in hairs and you've got to do a lot more greening. Um, a poodle, as far as I know, doesn't cast its hairs. So this is different. They're both dogs, but they're both different. And so what you would do is you would write a class called dog, and that would be your base class for dogs. It'd be like a blueprint. And it means that you wouldn't need to write like write down the things bark, um, 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 I'm not just sure what you would put in for a dog, like um does poos in the back, um I'm not too sure but it has four eggs, um grills, um sniffs gets excited when it sees its master sort of thing, I don't know, but what, there would be certain things you'd put in for the base class, which would be inherited when you create a new class for a specific type of dog, so the derived class would be more specific, and so the derived class would be um, like the characteristics of this dog, it's kind of breed, it would be like um, if it was a poodle, you'd it would be a poodle, it would be beautiful, it would be friendly, it would be um, like, um, it would be like a fashion icon. A uh, pit bull dog would be like more like a weapon. Keep back, I've got this big, bad, dangerous dog, and if you mess with me, you mess with my dog, that sort of thing. Um, to protect the house, nobody's going to go and visit you. No, keep the neighbours away, nobody's going to visit you for a cup of tea. If you've got a aggressive pit bull, no, it's like um, so. There's different things, so that would be the way you would use inheritance. 
and if we look at the class we've done last time, we create in the first class we've done different constructors. Right? And so that's key to polymorphism so because if this was a base class, the default constructor to get called is always the one with no arguments. And you've got to put your your constructor in your class if it's going to be a base class because the, when you run your the, the 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 derived class, the first thing it's called is the base class constructor. But if it's not got there, it's going to throw you an error saying, "Oh, there's no constructor." And so that's why you have it in. Um, and so this there's a way of changing. If you want to call one of the other ones when you inherit, you can put colon base brackets and end them just to say that I want to call that one there instead, instead of this one I'm calling this one here when when the, the constructor gets called so but we're going to cover this and this may be more in one tutorial right, so what what I've done is I've created three new classes dog class this is going to be the the base class and that's a parent and that's a super class right and what I've done is two dogs one to represent a fit and so this is a derived class a child class the subclass <coughs> so we're going to stick to the base and derived right, so this is a derived class Put those the same again as a derived class. Each one of these are going to inherit um, the dog class, and that's polymorphism, uh, inheritance, and so derived class. Okay, so yeah, the, the dog could be parent class, and the poodle could be child class. That's different terminology for the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance of Poodle and we're going to see that it doesn't access the parent class, the the base class, because we're going to show you the code to do that. So I've deleted all that code, we've still got those classes we created but I've just took them off the screen. And so what we're going to do is create an instance of Poodle. So we know how to do that is Poodle this the word poodle for the file and then we do give it a name um, puddle because maybe it does lots of wee puddles and new keyword and then poodle again and then brackets didn't put a D in here. Yeah, so that's sorted. And so what we're doing is we're creating an instance of this object. We've instantiated this class. We created an instance of it. There's lots of different terminologies and I don't want to go into the different words and terminologies and all that. I want to show you how we do things. Let's see. And so this is going to call the constructor of Poodle going to call this constructor so this is going to get printed out to screen and so if we run the program it's taking its time there you go cute wee poodle derives class right so and what you'll notice is it didn't call the dog class now to do that, what we do is, is when we declare the class here, we put a semicolon, and that's that's a, the, the, the key character for a derived class, 
for a base class and so in the space you don't use the base keyword you use the name of the class you're going to use as a base and at this instance it's dog so we can go dog so that's it sorted it's telling you dog is a class here and, and the console application one is that's application we're using that's what it's called so if we're on the program now you'll see that this constructor gets called and this gets called before the poodle class this constructor gets called before the poodle class because the derived class gets, class gets called first and so we're going to see this happen base class dog class constructor with no parameters and then then the, the poodle one was called I'm just going to check to see if that's what was in the constructor of dog yep it looked a bit strange way I done it so but that's what got called first now the base class the default is to call a constructor with no parameters but you can call a constructor with more than one parameter and you use the base keyword for it and so just to show you just to show you that I'm going to cut and paste this I've got to get rid of this first I'm going to do an int num, just pass an integer to it and take away the no and just do dog class constructor with parameters. Okay. And if we come back to Poodle, come back to Poodle. What's happened to you? Open up the door. I've come back to Pudo. Pudo's opened here. And what we can do if we go to the constructor of the Pudo, the double the, the the double the full colon, the colon, and we type base keyboard and then we have brackets. Now these brackets is the same brackets as a constructor that's for passing the things into it. And so if we go, if we give it a number, because we're looking just for one number, um, we can pass an integer to it. And if we run it, we'll find that it will, instead of the default one, this one here, it will actually call this one. And you can see dog class constructor with parameters. Dog's constructor with parameters is called instead of this one here. And to prove it again, what we can do is create another one. It could be a string as well, you've got to remember. And we'll put another int into it. Rooms. we would be passing them in and we would be using them in calculations for something that would be the idea behind it and so so that's just got two parameters going in so we'll go back to the poodle and then we put a comma 66 and we'll find if we go back to the dog and change the wording, right? Um, so let's try and see what happens. Would you believe it? So, so you can, you can actually dictate. You can have like polymorphisms on many different constructors. And then you can actually choose what constructor you use for what sort of application. So you've got a dog general class and it can be multi-purpose. So if you've got the documentation you can see if you pass um, integers to it and a string at the same time or an array or an object 
it's going to behave in a certain way and so that way you've got even more control for the general crass that you can use over and over again and um, that's the first part of polymorphism and again I thank you for your time and so we're going to go deeper into it inheritance and different things like that and this is what object-oriented programming is all about so again thank you for your time